الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين اما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في القران المجيد والفرقان الحميد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هل يستوي الذين يعلمون والذين لا يعلمون انما يتذكر اولو الالباب صدق الله العظيم um, الله سبحانه وتعالى says in this verse that say uh, those who know can those who know and those who do not know be the same and of course, you're all on a path of knowledge, you're all students of knowledge, whether you are college students or Ibrahim Academy students, you are learning the deen. Now, this verse can be understood in two ways. One, that the inequality between uh, those who know and those who do not know is an inequality in virtue. So, in terms of virtue, those who know and those who do not know are not the same. So, those who know are more virtuous, right? So, the Prophet wasallam said, that the virtue of a of a of a alim fadlul alim ala al abid ka fadli ala adnakum that the virtue of a alim over a over a person who without knowledge without prerequisite knowledge dedicates himself or herself just to worship is like my virtue i.e. the virtue of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam over the virtue of an ordinary person among you in one narration, he said, like the virtue of, of um, the sun over the remaining stars and so forth. Now, um, this is a virtue, this is tafawud in, uh, in virtue, in degree, in, in uh, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala views the, these two people. In that the degree of the alim is greater than the degree of the non-alim. The other way in which we can understand this difference between the two is based on responsibility so when allah says is he who knows the can the, he who knows be the same as he who doesn't know this is you can now look at this from a different perspective and that perspective is the perspective of responsibility that can the responsibilities of the two be the same and the answer is no the responsibility of somebody who knows is far greater than the responsibility of somebody, of somebody who doesn't know. As soon as a person knows something, immediately with that knowledge come responsibilities. The knowledge of retention, of retaining what you know, right? Uh, and there are great warnings against people who memorize the Quran and then forget it, right? Then there is the responsibility of practicing what you know. Because if you do not practice what you know, then it is hypocritical. If, because it, then the knowledge isn't beneficial. Knowledge is only beneficial when it is practiced. So we have to have a commitment to practice what we know. And then teach and propagate what we know. There is a responsibility to teach and to propagate what we, what we know. And then there is the responsibility of teaching and propagating through the practice and the teaching and propagating of it to allow that to mold into, a, into an example. To allow the two things, the practice, the knowing of the knowledge, the practice of the knowledge, and the propagation of the knowledge. To allow the three to come together into a beautiful example. So that the propagation of the knowledge is also not just by instructing, not just by verbally uh, imparting, or by imparting the knowledge in writing, uh, but also by example. All of these things become responsibilities that also make the people of knowledge different to those who do not have knowledge. The people on the path of knowledge different to those who are not on the path of knowledge. It isn't just about virtue. It isn't just about I am better than the other. But it's about responsibility. That there is a responsibility that makes us different. And in fact, it is the fulfillment of that responsibility that is the reason why there is a difference in virtue does that make sense so it is because these people know they know they practice they propagate they lead by example that they are also not the same as those who do not knowledge who therefore do not practice correctly enough and who therefore do not have the knowledge to propagate and do not have the right example It's because of that that these people are more virtuous so in fact if you don't have if you're not different in example, if you're not different in practice, then you're not different in virtue either. 
All right? And if the practice isn't there, then the, pra- the lack of practice is despite knowledge. The lack of not practicing becomes despite having knowledge, in which case the punishment is also greater. And therefore, those who know and those who do not know are not the same in punishment. Because on the day of judgment, the remiss of the person who knows will be seen as far greater than the sin of the one who doesn't know. So this tafawut, this difference and disparity between the people of knowledge and the people who do not have knowledge is, can be understood in these different contexts. right? And to get it right is to take advantage of the opportunity that you have to learn. Make sure that you're always committed to practicing it and then always making sure that you become an imam of the muttaqeen as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us to pray for it. He says, رَبَّنَا هَبْ لَنَا مِنْ أَزْوَاجِنَا وَذُرِّيَّاتِنَا قُرَّةَ أَعْيُنْ وَجَعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِمَامَ We are encouraged to pray to Allah that He makes us an imam of the muttaqeen. And being an imam of the people of taqwa is basically being an imam, not as in just in, as an imam in salah, but being a qudwa, being an example, being an uswa being an example for those people. And being an example isn't about one's own leadership, one's own ego, but it's about becoming a means to somebody else's guidance. Becoming a means to present a good example to someone so that that person, so that that person can take from that example and become like that. Take the good. And when it comes to learning from the example of another, as students, there is something that we always have to understand, that we always learn that which is good. We always follow the example of a person when that person is practicing good. We do not absolutely follow somebody's example. This is why when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised the Sahaba who, uh, who were early Muslims, He praised those who followed them with a condition. That, وَالَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُوهُمْ بِإِحْسَانِ They are people who follow their predecessors in good. They don't just follow for the sake of following, but they follow their good deeds. They follow, they follow their good example. So for example, we don't absolutely follow the Sahaba because among the Sahaba were those who committed sins, right? There was a Sahabi and a Sahabiya who had to uh, suffer the, uh, the rajam, the, the punishment for committing adultery, right? So we're obviously not going to follow that, are we? Right? So the following is conditional, that when we, there are people before us who, are, who we are meant to follow their example, or even when we ourselves lead by example, that those who follow, follow the good. Which means they have to have knowledge to be able to determine the good. Does that make sense? Inshallah. Jazakumullah khairan. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all, inshallah, the tawfiq to, to, have, to, to learn, to, to have true knowledge. Um, but most importantly, for the sake of practicing it so that it is beneficial. And for the sake of propagating it so that it is beneficial uh, to others.